If there's one thing you take away from this video, it's this. Malgret is a cyclical, short to medium range, high damage poke brawl hero. His kit is actually similar to Orisa, where your stomp is like a spear spin, your cardiac overdrive is like a fortify, and your cage fight is like a terror surge. You'll be looking to engage aggressively with your stomp, and then sustain that aggression or fall back with your cardiac overdrive. Of course, there's some nuances between you and Orisa, but that's the general cycle of your aggression. Don't eat too much poke damage in the pre-fight, don't let bad positioning force your cardiac overdrive early, and force advantageous duels with your cage fights. Malga's gun, the B-Tech TF2 Heavy Minigun. It costs $400,000 to fire this weapon for 12 seconds. Makes Malga fire either his incendiary chain gun, which ignites enemies on fire for 15 DPS for 3 seconds, or his volatile chain gun, which deals crit damage to enemies on fire. They both deal 5 damage per bullet, firing 18 bullets per second with a standard DPS of 90, with each minigun reducing your movement speed by 15%. They can also be fired together to produce 180 DPS, but the guns have a lot of spread and your move speed is reduced by a total of 30%. This would also be a good time to bring up his Berserker passive, where Malga converts 50% of all critical damage as overhealth. It's safe to say that out of all the ground tanks in Overwatch, so Reinhardt, Ramatra, Zarya, Orisa and others, Malga has the most poke damage and the most range out of all the tanks. Except Sigma, but he's a lot less brawly. As a result, I'm sure you already know the obvious advice to ignite enemies on fire, then use your volatile chain gun for free crits. This not only gives you more ult charge, but builds up your overhealth too. There's also the obvious advice, only use your dual chain guns in close range, aka anything under 10 meters. If they have a bigger hitbox, you can dual fire from a bit further away, but that's really it. One really important thing with your poke stage is to not take too much damage yourself. You have a massive hitbox on Malga, and ultimately, you want to close the distance to get the most out of your dual chain guns. That is your win condition. But if you take too much damage early on, you'll be unable to engage at all. The penultimate thing I want to touch on your chain guns with is actually target priority. I think that while shredding down the enemy tank, especially while up close, is absolutely a valid thing to do, try not to solely get tunneled on that. It's the same thing as Zarya players who just hold M1 against an Orisa, and then the DPS never get marked and end up carrying the lobby. I'll talk more about this though on the placeholder section and on the next ability. And lastly, I want to touch on your reloads. Malga has one of if not the longest reload at the game at 2 seconds, and since you gain overhealth and or actual health thanks to your cardiac overdrive from shooting, the last thing you want to happen is to pop your overdrive and be busy stuck reloading. Same thing if you want to int him with your stomp. Speaking of which, Malga's first ability, they got a tank v2. They got a tank. Makes Malga charge at the enemy team with a 50% damage reduction for 2 seconds. His max charge range is 28 meters, and he can optionally do a stomp that deals 90 damage in his inner radius and 45 on the outer radius. Malga also deals 25 damage on collision. If you get hit by Malga in the inner radius, you also get stunned for about half a second, and the cooldown is 6 seconds. A lot of people made comparisons between Malga's overrun and Reinhardt's pin, but in actuality, they're not really alike in terms of usage, mainly because Reinhardt has no damage reduction during his pin, and the obvious one, Reinhardt can actually take CC like Arna's sleep darts, whereas Malga cannot. Instead, Malga's overrun is much more akin to Arisa's spear spin. Yes, you go much further than spear spin, but both are forms of damage and CC mitigation and are used as engagement tools. Keep in mind, you can cancel your overrun to prevent it being locked in the stomp animation. I'll talk more about your actual cycle in the next section, but I thought I would play this section from my Arisa guide, talking about trading backlines and running on the squishies with your overrun if it's possible. For example, if you're playing up against a Winston with a squishy backline, if the Winston jumps your backline, you may want to trade out and to look and find an opportunity onto the enemy Zen or Ana. Even Spilo advises this when saying that Arisa can play super aggressively against squishy backlines lines, and we even see this in Overwatch League when someone is aggressively engaging onto Vancouver's squishy backline, and to a lesser extent, Mirror when he's trying to engage aggressively onto Gladiator's backline, and he does end up getting the honour. However, could argue that Gladiator's backline isn't squishy enough due to the Lucio, meaning Mirror could have bullied Reinhardt on the Winston instead. And this advice about trying to trade out and prioritise squishy ranged targets in particular really applies to Malga, 
but I'll talk about that more in the placehold section. The penultimate tip is do remember that your stomp actually has collision damage, so you can use this to finish off low targets around corners if you're out of ammo and or you need to catch up. And lastly, you can use this as an escape tool. It's a bit awkward, yes, but with that 50% damage reduction while you run, it's not bad to escape scenarios you don't want to be in. Malga's second ability, Daddy's Gotta Go To Work, Daddy's Gotta Go To Work, makes Malga take 30% less damage, gain 70% of the damage he deals as healing, and this also applies to his teammates in a 10 meter radius that has a 5 second duration. The cooldown is 10 seconds once the ability is over. So apart from the application to teammates, there's a lot of similarities to Ariza's Fortify here. The damage reduction, the duration, gaining HP in some kind of way, and the cooldown length. The main two differences is that with Arisa, you gain HP immediately, whereas with Malga, it's dependent on how much damage you deal, and the second difference is that, obviously, there's a teammate application here too. With everything being said, I think this ability is going to be more so about sustaining a high level of aggression rather than instantly popping it in a defensive manner. So the cycle would look like engaging with overrun, with ammo by the way, popping your cardiac overdrive, and either walking forwards or popping your cardiac overdrive and walking backwards. So when do you do which? Well, your aggression will be dictated by whether you have these four advantages. Again, mentioned in my Arisa guide. The advantages are cooldown or ultimate based, numbers, HP, or positional. If you have a big enough advantage due to those factors, then you can probably commit your cardiac overdrive to walking forward aggressively. Not to mention the teammate application here too. In particular, with heroes like Mei, Reaper, and Symmetra, who would be walking with you on the front line. It would basically be a closer range, more broadly queen shouts that allows your DPS to walk further and deal more damage. Now, are you going to use this to peel your supports, say, if they're getting dove? Well, not really, I think. Because of how much burst damage dive does, unless you're sitting directly on top of your backline, which is never really going to happen, I don't really see you using this ability defensively for your teammates as a perform appeal. Instead, I see this being used to amplify existing aggression from your own teammates on the front line. Malga's ultimate, 2 chains, makes Malga deploy a 1500 HP barrier with a 7 meter radius that locks in himself and enemies. The barrier has a 10 second duration and you can cancel it any time. The best solo queue way of using this ultimate is twofold, using it against ranged squishies like Hanzo, Soldier, Casti, Widowmaker, Ana, Zen and even Iliari and others too to force him into close range where you have the big advantage in the duel. The second way I see it being used is against dive tanks like Winston or Doomfist before or after they dive, because again, you straight up win in these close range matchups. Of course, there's the ult combos you can do, but what's more interesting is the ultimates that the enemy team can use in response to your cage fights. If you force Blizzard, Blossom, or any array of support ultimates, and you need to leave your cage, cancel it, and run the fuck away. Don't feel obliged to fight a brig in a rally, wasting your time, HP, and cooldowns, and then dying immediately afterwards. Unless your team can burst that brig, take the ult trade, and leave. More generally speaking, you're going to be using this ultimate in the mid fight mainly. This is because you're already going to be in close range, and cooldowns would have been used already, allowing you to get another advantage in that duel. Again, you can also use this ultimate early, the 4 CDs or ultimates, just know when to leave and run the fuck out. Lastly, you do actually have infinite ammo in your cage fights, meaning if you run out of ammo while in combat, this can be a way of minimising your downtime. Now to Malga's positioning and playstyle. The elephant in the room here is of course, trading with ranged backlines. Because unlike Reinhardt, Sigma, or even Orisa and Zarya to a lesser extent, you can't just shield off or absorb their range damage or utility. You need to physically be there on top of those squishies so that Discord, Sleep, Nade, Dynamite, Storm Arrows, etc. get used on you and not your backline. And unfortunately, in some scenarios where there's going to be high grounds and you have to push, it can be really tough for heroes like Malga or Queen, as you can see in the background, but the same really does apply to Malga. You can't shield off the Ana and Zen, but you can't run or jump onto them too. I'll talk about counterplay to this in a future video about webbing, but in solo queue, if you find yourself in a situation like this as Malga, you pretty much need to swap. But, what if you're not playing against ranged backlines? What if you're playing against Lucio, Moira, Kiriko, and to a lesser extent, Baptiste and Lifeweaver? Well that's where you can go full frontline and destroy the enemy tank, because there isn't this great ranged threat that you have to worry about. 
you could and actually should lean more into your poke playstyle, where you're not really going to be taking that much damage at a range against those kind of comps. And you yourself can do quite a bit from 20 meters away. And then when you're up close, you just blitz down the enemy team. Now into Malga's tank matchups. Zarya, a relatively neutral one for Malga. Without bubbles and with decent tracking, you can shred Zarya up close, since both of your DPSs are similar when maxed out. Zarya's never really going to frontline you unless she's high charge and you're low HP. So if you're able to close the distance and force out her bubbles before her and her team can make space, then you're golden. Ramatra, actually pretty favourable for Malga I'd say. The only thing I'd say is to be careful about how much damage Ramatra can deal at range in his Omnic form, especially with the recent buffs, and to also not tunnel onto him too much when he's blocking. But aside from that, Ramatra wants to get close in his Nemesis form, and when that happens, you just do way more damage than Ram can do up close. At 10 meters, you're going to be doing around 200 DPS, whereas Amartra is going to be doing around 100. Sigma, a fairly neutral matchup in my opinion. Yes, your overrun does override his rock and his flux, but again, if you eat too much damage early on, and Sigma just rocks you after your overrun, it's going to look a little rough for you. If you can naturally close the distance with cover, or see that he's wasted rock, you can hard frontline into him with your overrun, force his grasp, and gain space with your cardiac overdrive. Winston, how's it hanging? A slightly favourable matchup for Malga. Again, spa framework, go watch that video, but you can poke down Winston quite a lot before he dives, absorb his dive with your cardiac overdrive, which also applies to your teammates, and melt him up close. The issue is the map. If it's open, like New Queen Street, and Winston zones and dives your backline, and he's too far for you to shred, it's gonna be rough. Like Winston Arna for example, Winston dives your backline, you can't match him, meaning you're forced to trade with Arna, and then you get slept and naded. Orisa, a neutral matchup. I've made a lot of comparisons to you and Orisa in this video, and honestly, I don't think either one of you have a clear matchup win. If anything, I'd give it to Orisa. The sheer armor and fortify health reduce your close range effectiveness, and her javelin can shred you with the help of her team. Reinhardt, a favorable matchup for Malga. What is Reinhardt supposed to do here? If he plays distance, he gets softened up. If he tries to pin you, you just mirror with your stomp and then cancel it. And if he tries to swing at you, he's going to be eating dual chain gun critical damage. And if you're quick enough, you can probably avoid the shatter with your overrun. Not a fan of this matchup for Reinhardt. Diva, a neutral matchup. Unlike Winston, Doom or Bull, Diva is rarely going to be hard diving your backline. Most of the time, she'll be marking high grounds or playing the space around you, then straight up frontlining. But even if she does end up on the frontline, she can eat 4 seconds worth of your miniguns. Roadhog, a favourable matchup for Malga. His whole hog fucks your cage, but aside from that, I think Malga shreds this guy. Similar to Ramatra in his nemesis form, from about 10 meters away, you can dual fire your guns and melt hog, meaning you can farm over health and regular health. And even if you get hooked by hog, as long as you're in your support LOS, you're now in perfect range to shred him and gain back all that HP that you lost. Doomfist. You can hard farm Doomfist in the pre-fights. He's got the lowest tank HP in the game, he's got no armor, no poke damage, and he's got a decent hitbox. You can melt this guy before he even uses a single ability. But when he does go in, focus on absorbing not his pressure, but the pressure from the rest of his team, and then mowing down the Doomfist afterwards when his dive cycle is over. Junker Queen, a disfavorable matchup for Malga. Because of your hitbox, you're pretty much a guaranteed knife for her every time. And because of her own hitbox and her titan spread, she can deal quite a bit of damage to you in the pre-fights. As a result, play hard cover to prevent her poking you down too much, and hard push her when she's down her commanding shouts. Wrecking Ball, a slightly disfavorable matchup for Malga. Similar to Amartra, and most ground tanks frankly, you and Ball just don't interact much because of the lack of hard CC, and your lack of mobility. Ball can duel your backline, and trading up backlines as Malga is not the easiest thing in the world, because as I've talked about before, you haven't got easy ways to deal with Discord, Nade, Sleep, or general range damage. And that's it for the complete Malga guides. Let me know your thoughts down below, and until next time.